All right, uh, he is hoping that all is well with you from wherever you are listening and, of course, watching for those who are checking us out on our YouTube page. Thank you so much for being with us on 89.7 Contact FM. My name is Eugene Anangwe. The show you're listening to is One on One. We are also using a hashtag uh, that is uh, hashtag 101RW to participate in the conversations that we're having here in the program. My guest in studio today is none other than Mr. Eve Nienzi. He is the manager customer care unit at the Rwanda Development Board. And of course, we're here talking about the issue of uh, customer service week, which is being currently underway. And of course, uh, we'll talk about uh, the impact assessment of the Naomi campaign, right? Welcome to One on One. Thank you very much. Are Thank you, you all right? Me. I'm good. You okay? I'm very good. Okay, so now I'd like you just to move a bit closer to your mic and then uh, we'll start the conversation by taking a look at uh, the impact of some of the campaigns that uh, your institution, that is the RDB, has come up with uh, in order to improve the state of service delivery in the country. What has been done so far and how can we gauge this uh, success or failure? Um, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, um, we have been doing a lot of uh, um, activities. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is the Naomi campaign, mm -hmm. which is uh, an awareness campaign mm -hmm. uh, to raise um, the, into, I mean, to create in the minds of uh, Rwandans the importance of uh, customer service. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, we have been uh, ha having other um, programs. One of them is the uh, training program, capacity mm. building program. Mm. Another program is uh, uh, a program of... Capacity uh, building program, meaning yes. what? It is about training. Mm. It is training um, into that, that capacity building. We have a training of trainers. We have a program of selecting uh, trainers for particular uh, sectors. Mm -hmm. And also we train uh, uh, frontline staff mm. in customer service. Uh, other than that, we have also a program of uh, putting in, in place standards, uh, service standards, and also another program is about enforcing those standards, making sure people are, are, are aware, but also they, they put into practice those, those standards. Mm. So those are the main four pillars we've been working on, but uh, most of the people know the uh, Naomi campaign, mm -hmm. which is the awareness campaign, but mm. also we have other programs. We'll be talking about the Naomi campaign, but let's talk about some of the improvements that have been seen in some of the uh you know service delivery points or some uh, institutions would you say that uh, it is thanks to naomi or thanks to rdb that we've seen this success would you take the credit or would you also go in line with those who believe that it is probably the managers of some of these institutions that have solely or independently worked their way out to improve service delivery at the institutions I'll say both. I'll say um, uh, yes and no. We have been um, trying to raise awareness, which has been uh, quite successful. Mm -hmm. But as well, we know that uh, the government has been putting a lot of efforts, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, measures in place, which is not necessarily uh, RDB. Mm -hmm. uh, we think also that has been having an impact. But as well, as you're saying, individual managers also have a good role to play to make sure uh, there is improvement in the services uh, that they deliver. Mm -hmm. So I think both it has been having a, a, an impact on both sides. Yeah. Mm. But how do you then gauge this uh, improvement as, as an institution? I've not seen any surveys. Probably there are some uh, that I'm not aware of, but probably this is the time for you to tell us. How do you gauge and say between 2008 to 2014, this is what we've been able to achieve under this projects that we have done how do you gauge that uh, sure um there is uh, as you're saying we, we do conduct uh, what you call the customer care satisfaction survey mm -hmm. national satisfaction survey mm -hmm. but as well the other surveys conducted by rona governance board mm -hmm. there is the citizen report card there is the governance report card oh, they're all on service delivery mm -hmm. um particularly when we, t we talk about the survey we conduct mm -hmm. um we 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 use uh, what we call um pra some parameters to measure the level of satisfaction. Uh, but again, uh, I would like to say that uh, some of the results are not necessarily uh, the outcome of what we have done. Uh, maybe so what the institution has done or the, the government has done in general. Uh, because uh, service improvement uh, has a lot of parameters that we and efforts that are necessary to, to, to improve uh, mm -hmm. the, the service. So we look at uh, communication, one of, the, one of the parameters. We measure communication, we measure timeliness 
how long does it take to get service? We measure problem solving. How are the issues uh, encountered in services? How are they uh, solved? Do they have a suggestion box? If there's a suggestion box, is it useful? Do they have other measures? Do you get a response when you get a complaint and, uh, and uh, address it? And also look at the professionalism mm. of um, the institution itself and the, the people. Also, we look at uh, the ease of doing business or convenience. Would, would you consider your, sure. your, your, your department or your institution as um, uh, the consumer protection unit in a way? There is a consumer protection unit in uh, Minicom, the Ministry so, of Commerce. And, and when so. you say you ask uh, people uh, on their satisfaction level mm. of, of service delivery, how far can you go beyond just asking these questions? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we do ask to, to see the, uh, what, what we call the symptoms of the, the problem. Because um, when, when we see there is a slowness in service, Probably there is something behind that slowness mm -hmm. that you want to address before uh, we we see that slowness uh, gone. Mm. Uh, that's why we do the satisfaction survey to see where the issues. Then what? And then we address them with the regulators mm -hmm. and then the institutions themselves. Mm. For example, um, because we do the satisfaction sector by sector, mm. we'll find some issues in the transport sector, some issues in the hospitality sector and the tourism sector, and then we'll. Uh, give those issues and then we'll address them together with the regulators of those uh, particular sectors. Mm -hmm. We said here are the issues that are there and we need to find how to, 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 to solve them. Mm -hmm. Probably we give them some um, recommendations on how they can be solved. Mm -hmm. And then we follow up next year to see are there any changes or not. Would you, would you agree with me uh, uh, on, on some who feel that probably your voice is silent um, in, in, in many ways and, and, and has led to maybe people not making you a point of reference when it comes to some of their plea uh, if they want services to be delivered and they feel like it's not being delivered properly uh, as as a customer care uh, service unit or, or, or institution at rdb sure. do you feel that probably you have not been out there in people's faces whereby they get to a point and say i went to this institution i did not get the proper service and probably they tag you along on the platforms that they're complaining sure do you feel like there's been a laxity in I, I think you are uh, that that we have realized that mm -hmm. and um we uh from next year we are hoping uh with the new uh, structure we're going to get we'll get more uh, more stuff and more resources which we are going to use to make sure we uh Im we get more of a uh, uh, Meaning in the platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we are setting up uh, a call center mm -hmm. to be able to receive uh, all those uh, complaints, suggestions from 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 across the, the country, mm -hmm. um, w which is going to be something good. And also, we have platforms in place, but also, but we have, as we started, we started small because uh, we w wanted to start with the hospitality sector mm. and, uh, and and first be able to, to manage because the, we have other regulators which again should be regulating the different sectors. RDB is in charge of regulating the hospitality and tourism sector. That's where we have been putting more more, more related focus. Mm -hmm. yes. And so how long then does it take us to get to that point of we are trying to because uh, this customer care unit at RDB, um, if you can just highlight us, when was it set up? Uh, the customer care unit was uh, set up in 2010. 2010. But and now we're in 2011. So, okay, yeah. fine. But 2011 to 2014. Sure. How much more time do we need to be able to achieve what you're saying you're still planning to do? Well, um, you know, behavioral change uh, campaign is not uh, something that happens overnight. Mm -hmm. We, um, there is a process, a process. You know, changing the, the minds and the minds and the behaviors of people, it takes, we are using what you call uh, behavioral change techniques. Mm. And uh, sometimes it takes time. It's like uh, someone who's smoking, mm -hmm. telling him stop to smoke. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just stop uh, the same day. So mm -hmm. it, it takes quite a process. There is a, what we call the stages where there is denial. And that process, we have been able to, to get out of that process, that, that particular stage, stage of denial. People were denying, saying, oh, we, we're providing good service. We don't know. The problem maybe is the, with the clients. Mm -hmm. So we have, we, have, we have been trying to first get out of that stage and then go to the awareness stage mm. where people are aware that the services we are providing are not sufficient mm. and then from there we're going now to the stage of uh, putting the best practices into people uh, and then uh, and then um, teaching them and then training and capacity building 
And then from there, people will get to a, play, to, to a, to a stage where they'll start now to be, um, being um, advocacy, mm. advocating for the uh, for good services. Okay. Yes. So sure. you see, every institution that uh, has mm. a plan or has a vision always puts together a timeline and says, sure. we are expecting by the time we get to this point or this year or this time, we'll be able to have fully dealt with all these particular problems or baggages that are affecting us. For example, Rhonda has vision 2020. Sure. And, 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 and so for you, when you say it takes time, it's, it's, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. So then what's the timeline for you? That the day that someone will come to a hospitality sure. uh, industry and will find proper service delivery and with, with you know, minimum or even no complaints or you have sorted all these issues you're saying here, what's that timeline? Uh, true. Um, I was saying that for the uh, behavioral change campaign, mm. but uh, as far as uh, service delivery is concerned, uh, the government has got a, a clear indication on where it wants to be. Um, for example, the EDPRS2 uh, and the Seven Year Government Program, they state that uh, service delivery has to reach 80% satisfaction level by 2017. Mm. That is a government. We're in what level today? Today, as uh, as of uh, last year, 2013, it was at 71 percent. 71, and uh, that is uh, across public and private sector. Mm. But uh, um, the target is to reach 80 percent um, satisfaction level. It means that there is a timeline. Mm. There's a timeline, and uh, and uh, I think we'll, we will reach there. Mm. So, so we are now in the uh, customer service week. But uh, your institution has come under criticism from some quarters as as not having communicated properly some of these things and 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 even some of the campaigns that uh, you do. So uh, how can you defend yourself in this area? Because there are those who feel maybe your institution doesn't understand the need of going in the faces of people in terms of communication uh, and and letting the message get out there. Okay. So what would you say about that? Um, uh, well, um, I'll, maybe I'll say on on uh, on this particular week. Mm -hmm. um, this week, normally it is celebrated. It's almost over. Eh? <laughs> well, it is the second day. Today yes. is the second day. Mm. We we started yesterday. Mm. Um, this week is normally celebrated at corporate level, mm -hmm. but we felt as as a public institution mm -hmm. that we should facilitate because uh, it was not being celebrated before in Rwanda, and la starting last year. It was the first time we did this. Uh, we tried to celebrate it, and then we felt also it should be. We should encourage different institutions, different corporate uh, organizations to celebrate it as well. That's why we are having those uh, the communications we are having. But uh, normally, it's not really celebrated at the country level. It is celebrated at corporate level. That's why we have a lot, of, like uh, in our institution RDB, we have a lot of activities. But you'll find that uh, at uh, national level, we have a few events. That's why, uh, we, but uh, again, we we are we are trying to motivate people to encourage uh, employ employers to celebrate this week. Mm. What do you want them to celebrate, really? Uh, one is to uh, boost the morale of their employees and uh, and uh, encourage teamwork and also uh, motivate them in several ways. Reward uh, frontline staff who are doing well. And as well, I remind also their customers, mm -hmm. their customers that uh, they are really important mm -hmm. and also raise company-wide awareness about the importance of customer service. Mm -hmm. Those are the four main things that we, we're encouraging uh, organization to do. Mm -hmm. yes, so uh, then how will you do an impact analysis? For the week? Mm -hmm. of, well, um, uh, one of the outcomes... Or is just yet another at, week that you say, okay, in our calendar we have this week and then it ends there. Uh, not really. This week, we we are targeting to reach 600 uh, organizations, public and private institutions. Uh, Why giving 600? Them it seems not so much looking at the population versus the, the, the industries and sectors that we have. It's true. Uh, we are giving them uh, what we call uh, educational materials on, on customer service. We are giving them those institutions, each, each of them which is a, a huge number in the country. Mm -hmm. That is coming from central level to local government, uh, the province, the district, sector, all of them. We are giving them materials to read. When they are seated in their offices, mm -hmm. so they can, they, can, they can have a look. They can read in their own time. So those materials will stay there. 
will stay there and then they don't want to get time it is in both in Kenya Rwanda and in English mm-hmm. and they have been customized to the Rwandan case mm-hmm. looking at the issues we have in the country look at, looking at uh, the parameters that we are failing at and how we can address them using again mm-hmm. in the context of Rwanda and our culture mm-hmm. w- what informed this decision of of coming up with that strategy because most of the time um some people have said we are giving the wrong medicine for a certain disease so what 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 has informed that decision of saying let's give the booklets let's give them these books for them to read in english and in kenya rwanda and and then this is what we expect to have at the end of that did you do a survey did you do uh, a yes. study we do conduct studies and, and and what did it say and is that mm. the real issue that people want the booklets uh, of course we, we we have a strategy mm. that we are using to uh, to do this and uh, one of the 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 um uh, the medicine as you are saying mm. that we found that is necessary to do is to because we have a lot of uh, things that we do uh, one of them I told you is training it is awareness it is uh, putting in place standards policies and stuff so one of them was really to make sure that uh, people because what we have found in the research is that sometimes people don't give good service because they don't want to but because they don't know how to give it better so that's why we have put best practices into those booklets into those materials so that people when they they get their time they read and understand how they can do better i think that something it's not uh, i mean it's not uh, the only thing to do but it's one of the medicines mm. yes because when you mentioned it it means that's yeah. that's your main uh, area of, of of concern that that giving out booklets is going to help sort out service delivery issues uh, it is going to help but not, not, not it's not the only thing that uh, is going to uh, to to raise because uh, looking at the sectors we have each sector has gone its own issue mm. transport sector has gone its its own uh, issues the hospitality sector has gone its own issues in into customer service so we don't address them the same way uh, and we have a strategy for each sector because we look at the the issues there and then we talk to the clients what are the issues here we talk to the staff why do you think you don't what is hindering you to deliver good service and then from there we design a strategy mm. and then from that strategy that's where we we have different interventions among them uh, the customer care week uh, giving out the booklets media campaigns and the, and, and so on and so mm. forth so yes. you say that you're on that um uh you regulate the hospitality industry sure. or sector now when you say you regulate what exactly do you do because i asked you this question earlier on how far can you go in terms of uh, you know regulation in terms of uh, you know making your voice heard do you just uh, get this information research and then you know ends there what can you do i mean if i was to walk into a hospitality uh, institution and and i had poor service i mean what what are you able to do as 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 a regulator um i will uh I'll try to answer that question mm-hmm. but I, I I'm not in the, in the, in the tourism uh, department which I will be the the best uh, department to, to, to answer it mm-hmm. uh, but then what, what we do the regulators sure. you've said so you should be able to answer that yes as uh, regulator as the as the institution sure. yes mm-hmm. what we what we do um, is, is is truly to to make sure uh, the uh, they abide by the standards that we have uh, the house we have state set well among the things that we do for them is uh we have put for example in place the classification uh system we have put in place uh, bo- uh, suggestion boxes where rdb suggestion boxes where clients when they have issues they can put them there and then we collect them and then we, but also we have a line where people can call when they have issues again we are, we are not here to uh, to to punish uh, on, only the private sector but we are here to encourage them to improve that's why we we have measures in place when service is failing then we deal with it how we, do, we of course it depends on the on on on, on uh, the offense on, on let the, me give an example true. you walk into uh, unless if you want to clarify what you mean by hospitality uh, sector mm-hmm. i i i, I that is hotel yes, restaurant and, bar, and yes bars, so yes. i walk yeah. into this one of them sure. and the service there is not to my satisfaction and and i've i've complained several times i've written the suggestion boxes i've done all that what are you able to do as as the customer care unit at rdb well what what we do first is uh we, because we do get a lot of uh, those kind of complaints 
one person says, <coughs> well, I, I went here, I was not satisfied, mm. and then I'm complaining. Mm-hmm. Um, when we get the complaint while the client is still there, and we are able to go there straight away, then we make sure we we talk to the to both of them, and then we look who was because sometimes uh, we get complaints, and then when we try to find out the a person complaining doesn't is not willing to give information enough information, and then it's difficult for us to understand who was really in fault. But when we, we we get a chance and the client is still there, and we talk to the to the service provider, we find the service provider is is uh, is the one in fault, is the one uh, who then deliver the service, and then. We have uh, measures to, to to punish the situation. What are these measures that you don't want to tell me? Well, um, because we don't want to sound um, like we we are here to to, to punish the the private sector, but we have been no, able no, to close. No, it's not punishing. It's it it is what you are able we to have do, been, and it's we have not been able to close the institution. So you can the, close an institution. Yes. If it is not pro- providing proper services, yes. you have the powers and authority under the law to close it down. You can. Yes. How many have you closed so far? Well, I don't have the statistics with me, um, but um, we have we have had some uh, inspections. We have an inspection team, mm-hmm. and I believe right now they are, they are doing inspection uh, up country. And uh, sometimes it doesn't. It's not closing for. I mean, they say we are closing you for two weeks. You sort this out, and then you open. Oh, we found the kitchen is failing. We close the kitchen. We leave the other departments working. There's a difference between hygienic failures yes. and the service delivery failures in terms of i came sure. here i yeah. took all these hours and i was not served and when they came to serve me he was or she was rude and there's a difference between the cleaners and the pan so mm. in this part of rudeness and not giving proper services you're able to call for the closure we are, we are able to do that and some of the, sometimes the the part of service also has uh, it comes from hygiene sometimes because sometimes we'll probably sometimes maybe eat meat and then it says the meat was not well cooked. When we look at the, the kitchen, we found that there's an issue in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it is related. The mm-hmm. issue of service and the issue of of Of, of course, but that's for the sure. medical experts to, to, to be sure. the, mm-hmm. Now, what if it is the problem coming from the customer? What are you able to do? Um, as per now, uh, really, uh, for service providers, the customers are king. And uh, we don't have uh, in, in, in place uh, measures to, to punish uh, customers. But uh, what we encourage institutions is to have uh, <coughs> their charters. Mm. And their charters, they should specify uh, exactly what they, how they want the service to be, to be rendered in the institution, but also how the customers c- should behave. Mm. Because we have had uh, cases where um, staff are, are complaining as well. Mm. They are complaining about how they are they are treated. Because what I understand is, you know, service sure. delivery is two way. I mean, there's a point where right. it is the responsibility of the customer as well. True. And and when a customer comes, I've seen some who come arrogantly and they believe I need to be given this service. I demand. I want it because. True. Uh, and and mobile, maybe sometimes it is them who are the problem. Right. But when you say the customer is king, at some point, do you feel that probably you're killing that belief that it is two way? It should be two way, but I, uh, but again, as I said, uh, as a service provider, you should know how to treat respectfully mm. Mm. the client because mm. the client is always a client, mm. even when he's wrong, he's always the client. Mm. So, uh, well, also I've, had, I've had also cases of of also sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. People wanting they go to a bar, mm-hmm. they want to to touch the the, 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 the waiter, the, waiter. Mm. the waitress, or you know those kind of cases. That's why we say people should be also be respectful, and also thank. The, 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 the people are giving them service mm. and tip because also it's a tool as you're saying mm. so tip tip them this yes. is what you're encouraging people to do sure how and how about those who feel this is being corrupt i mean i demand this service it's, it's, it's my right i pay for it why should i tip you well if it's coming from the customer uh, service unit from rdb that we have to tip our customer i mean our our service providers for them to give us good service and then they read it as now they want us to be corrupt what would you tell them no uh, we are not saying uh, we should uh, tip them to give us good service mm. but we should tip those who give good service mm. i think there is a difference there and then um we encourage that it's not something compulsory mm-hmm. but we think it's something that can raise the bar to the level of service because also, the staff they need to be motivated. Mm-hmm. Some of these uh, staff they get uh, they get very low salaries, mm-hmm. and when they get a tip, they get encouraged, they get motivated 
Uh, so we, we, it's something that I can also assist mm-hmm. and help mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. This is all we had time to do. Thank you uh, very much. Right here, Eve. Thank you so much, Manager Customer Service Unit at the RDB. My guest uh, today on One on One. Thank you so much for keeping it 89.7 Contact FM. The hashtag is 101RW. And of course, you can also follow us at 101RW. I'm Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye for now. <laughs>